Hello everyone, and welcome back to the World Tour episode number two. This time we're going to be looking at some of the outskirts here. Uh, the main place is this sort of jungly area, and then there's also this of course, which is actually empty on the inside, spoiler alert. And then there's a bunch of stuff just kind of scattered around, if I remember correctly. I think there's like a, a spider spawner, and maybe like a sand farm and a zombie spawner somewhere. Oh, come on, <laughs> make this jump. There we go. Uh, but yeah, it might be a bit of a choppy episode because I don't remember exactly where everything is. Oh, what's this? Where everything is. Ooh. Oh, this is... Yeah, that's where I used to have my nether portal. I guess I never completely removed it. You can see some obsidian down there. But let's look at this first. So... This is one of my favorite areas, and it, it makes me, whenever I come here, it makes me want to build with more sort of trees and nature type stuff in the future. But I made this to house my animals, and the original idea was that I'd have a pen for each animal, and then sheep would have a bunch of these mini pens with each, uh, each color of sheep. That never ended up happening. This is one of the few remaining mini pens, but I think I took them down and replace it with just a, a big pen over there. So we have, uh, well, chickens are here. They're actually above there in a little uh, in a little building that I made. And this used to be a snow farm, just because I didn't have anywhere else to put it. This is a cow farm, of course. It's got the, the water siding. I think I did that on most of the pens here. Uh, that was when animals used to glitch through walls. So you, you I don't think they do it anymore. There used to be like a big problem with when you would log out, animals would always end up suffocating in walls. So the, the water here, which has fence gates beneath it, fence gates? No, just fences. Fences beneath them uh, prevent them from going up against the wall. And then we have sheep, pigs, which the pen didn't end up getting finished. Uh, little cocoa bean farm in the center there, I guess. I don't know why that's there. And then the center here is uh, just a little house. Oh man, you can really see through. I need to add more, more layers there. Uh, bed, some ooh, some TNT. I don't think there's anything too special in these chests. And then uh, up top is where I started to make some farms, which look really bad now. I guess I think I was either planning to cover them with leaves, or maybe just I don't know. They don't look very good. They're just they're just pretty plain. But let's see, this is the uh, chicken farm. Uh, and I guess there's a chicken cooker here, too. I didn't actually know that. Uh, does this, is this working? There's a clock without any redstone. Uh, I think there's supposed to be probably a comparator here. And then just a block here, and that would make it maybe a... Man, I don't know how this was supposed to work. It might have just been like an on-off switch. In fact, I think that's what it was. I think there was a lever here. I don't know why it's all gone now, but there used to be like a lever here, uh, probably a comparator, or repeater, comparator, lock, or something like that. And the dispenser has feathers in it? How? I don't understand how this works, and why is there so much junk in here? Alright, well, anyway, that's a chicken farm. What is this guy? Oh, this is my... This is the villager. Yeah, so when when villager trading was a thing, I was trying to get the ideal villager, which would have raw chicken at the end, and I was going to make uh, this huge chicken farm. Well, you know, huge chicken farms and a lot of chickens, and trade with them. That was when the way to trade with villagers was if their last trade was the one that you wanted. Uh, that, that's... That was the best way to do it before. And then, let's see, this is a cactus farm. I think. Pretty standard. Sugarcane farm over here, you just hit the button. And uh, pistons extend, not on the timer or anything. So that pretty much does it for this area. Very incomplete. I wanna, if I do end up repairing some stuff around here, which I want to, there's a lot of like, creeper holes and miscellaneous stuff around here. But one of the things that I wanna do is maybe I don't know what is happening there, but I want to maybe cover these with leaves or something, maybe make a design on them, do something with this, this area, and the top here is supposed to be more like the tops of trees, so it's supposed to be 
much more rough, but it takes a it takes a lot of work. It's a lot of block placing. I remember just doing like the one layer up here took a lot of work. All right, so let's hop over. I guess next to the little snow globe area, and uh, look at some stuff there. Okay, so I slept and made it day. Uh, I forgot that this. I never made this wall actually touching the ground. That's one of those little repair things that I would have to do uh, if we started a Let's Play on this world. Stuff like that, and also creeper holes. I never repaired creeper holes. Like, there's one right there. You can see stuff like that. So, the snow globe. Let's uh, let's hop back here real quick. Snow globe. You can tell it's a hexagon on the bottom. Uh, but then as you get towards the top, I, I kind of changed... Oh, jeez. I kind of changed it up a little bit. And I sloped in. I didn't really, I didn't plan it out that well, but I think it ended up looking kind of cool anyway. Because I started making it a hexagon, but I forgot to slope uh, these sidewalls in a little bit. Is there a zombie around here? Oh, he's underground. Oh, yeah, I remember this little cave area trying to deal with that when I was building the thing. So the idea was that I was going to make this into a PvP arena. Uh, the center here is going to be an ice themed, obviously. The center here was going to be like an ice ring where you could fight. Uh, these little weird obstacles were going to be uh, scattered around inside and stuff like that. I think these were just kind of made uh, as tests or something. I don't really know. But that never ended up happening. I kind of I ran out of steam after building this this big dome like thing. Uh, it looks pretty cool from the inside. From the outside, it's kind of bland because it's just snow. And it's also in a weird spot because it's right next to the desert. This is before biomes would uh, go by theme. So it's just snow, and I kind of... I, I didn't plan out exactly... Uh, well, I guess I, I had to plan out exactly what the size was because I started from the bottom. Started from the bottom? Uh, <laughs> we, I started from the bottom, so I knew where it was going to land, but it's kind of right butting up against the forest and the desert, which is weird. S and it's floating on water. Anyway, that's it for the snow globe. Let's see. I think next I'm going to try to find the spider spawner that should be down that way somewhere. Aha! Uh -huh, I think I found it. So, that's the snow globe right over there, and if you follow this river, I uh, get to this, which... I think is a quad spider spawner. I don't actually remember with those four, or it might have been five. Probably just four. Uh, and I don't think this ever worked the way I really intended it to. Is there a way to see? No. There's not really any way. There's not any glass around here. So let's start breaking this open. Uh, that I. Oh, what is? Are they stepping on pressure plates? Why would I have pressure plates here? Alright, well, that's Cave Spider. I think there's... Oh, that's... I can't tell. It's too dark. I think that's a regular spider. Uh, there's this one, two, there's one here. That is also Cave Spider. And then I think that there's one more... Here? Oh, okay. What? Why are you on pressure plates? Oh, that's just how I... Okay, I see. Oh! Derp. Alright, I guess that doesn't actually matter. Get off of me. Yes, yeah, so this is regular spider, too. Okay. Yeah, I don't need these signs here. Anyway, so it's four. I don't think... Was there a fifth, fifth one? Was there, like, one here? Uh... No. So it's quad, and I tried to get them so that they would all... <laughs> oh, man. I remember spending so much time on this. Tried to get them so they would all end up... All perfectly in this one little area. And then I tried dividing it so that bigger spiders ended up in one spot. Cave spiders in another. It never really ended up working. I hate... Hate making spider spawners. They're so annoying. Climbing walls and everything. But... uh. I mean, it kind of worked, I guess, at some point. I don't even know. All these random passageways. Uh, but, 
I feel like it would be cool to uh, redo this just as instead of trying to get experience from them, uh, just make it a straight drop and have them all die because uh, quad spider spawner is pretty good. Uh, just for the string and stuff that you get from it. All right, so this next place, whoa. Did you just sizzle in the water? Huh. Uh, this next place I almost forgot about, but I think that somewhere around here is a slime farm. An incomplete slime farm, like many of the builds around here. But I think that I, I came up like with my own design. Yeah, so the idea was that uh, it, a slime always moves whenever it spawns, and it would end up in one of these corners. Uh, and then... Let's get a... We don't have a water bucket. Okay. I'm going to end up burning myself in this lava. Uh, if it was a big slime, it would get burnt right here. And if it was a little slime... Oh, let's just carefully slide under. It would go into this water stream. And this water stream eventually... And we probably chose the one farthest. I think this is the farthest from it, so it might take a while to get there. But all of these water streams end up going to one spot and that was the that was the idea and I could use multiple ladders to get up and uh, or down and have multiple layers yes yeah, so they ended up here I think that it worked I think that I used to get slimes okay careful this is where I, I always burnt myself yeah see because you walk up and you go up a little bit <gasps> okay let's just enter pearl and hopefully not burn to death. Yes, yeah, so that's just the slime farm. Uh, nothing too special. No. 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 No, no. The next place is uh, my zombie spawner, which used to be... Uh, it used to be where I got pretty much all of my experience, at least early on in the world. And I think it was a... Wow, that is really loud. Uh, I don't know which one it is, so I'm just going to turn everything down. I think it was uh, a double one, but I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly. Anyway, it's down this track, and there's a cart. Ah, I don't want my bow. Yep. Oh, I timed it perfectly, except we didn't get it. All right, and apparently there's another portal here. I forgot about that. By the way, one interesting thing. Not many things broke when I uh, loaded up my world in 1.8. But all the nether portals got reset, so I had to go around lighting them all. Uh, well, I think only the nether ones, though. The over overworld ones uh, stayed fine. So yeah, these are it is a double one. So two zombie spawners here, and then some splash potions. And I believe that somehow, I guess they went up a little water elevator and then came down here. And I think that this, I think that's supposed to not be there. And it still doesn't work. Well, something like that. At one point it was functional, and I used it to farm experience. Uh, but of course, I soon got an Enderman farm, and actually we should go to the Enderman farm next. So, if you go through uh, another portal from the hub, you end up in the uh, stronghold. I don't trust this rail. Oh, look, I used detector rails. That's interesting. I might take that on the way back. I don't know if this... I mean, I don't think it just drops off the face of the earth, but you never know. Uh, a little water bucket there. What do I have? Let me pick that up. I don't know why it's there. Probably to save me from falling off or something. Uh, but yeah, this leads to my Enderman farm. And... I, I don't know what version, whether I like updated this at any point, but it used to be the version with pressure plates, where the Enderman would just spawn on a pressure plate, and then it would activate. Oh yeah, I remember enchanting so much here. Good times. I used to enchant gold stuff because you could get uh, efficiency 5 on it, which was cool. Before you could get efficiency 5 on diamond stuff, that is. Uh, some books. Ooh, wow. There's... Those are really good books. Those must be my best. Uh, oh yeah, and I can change to to from killing mode to death mode. Those are those guys are loud. Uh, what are they, hostile creatures? 
Yeah, I think this is a uh, tutorial by Doc M, if I'm not mistaken. For a really early version, these are all Ender Pearls. Actually, I should take some of those back. I need some Ender Pearls. Uh, and then, yeah, let's see. Let's see what type this was. I still have my ladder going up here. I guess I never took it down. Ah, oh, and that water's messed up right there. That shouldn't be like that. That's annoying. But to fix it, I'd have to like remove all the water in the world. Uh, I think it. I think it still is. Oh, we should get some sort of blocks on our bar. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just very simply a pressure plate to a uh, piston, which pushes them off. Uh, this isn't very efficient because you need air space here. Oh, and it's only like a few layers high. Yeah, not the greatest Enderman farm ever, but it, it served its purpose for sure. So, in the nether hub here, the end is down that way. That's where we just came from. And I think the last place I want to show you guys this episode is the Wither Farm. Which isn't super impressive, but it's kind of neat. I ended up, instead of half slabbing the area around it, I actually used lava. So, uh, it got to the point where every time I would go there, uh, my computer would crash. It would just completely freeze up, and uh, a couple of times I had to use like MC Edit to get my character out of the area, because every time I would log on, it would just end up crashing the world, and I don't think that that happens anymore, but we'll have to see. It's definitely, definitely pretty heavy on my computer with all the lava there. Yeah, there is a ton of lava. So this is just the ladder leading down. And uh, you can see just in the distance a little bit. And there's even more farther out where we can't see because of the fog. But the main spawning platform is just the center one right here. And it's made of, I believe, a double intersection. And then it's three layers-ish high. So it ends up being a decent number of spawning spots. And then also the surrounding walkways. I believe I left non lavaed or non half slabbed. Uh, and somewhere, I think it's the second level. Yeah, it's just a little room, and then you can run off. Here, there's an ice ice path, ice path uh, that you can run and get rid of. What is? I don't know what that's there for. Uh, but you can run and get rid of the mobs, let them despawn. And, yeah, the paths along here. I think I was planning to eventually uh, expand this place, at least make these uh, all made of stone brick and stuff like that to make it look a little nicer. And I spammed torches here for some reason. I don't know why. Do torches prevent blazes from spawning? I don't know what the purpose of that was, but for some reason I did that. Uh, but anyway, that's going to be about it for this episode. I think that I covered most of uh, everything besides the desert village, of course, was last episode, and the island. I'm excited to show you guys the island. The island is kind of a more recent. All this stuff was probably a year and a half to two years ago is when it was made. Or maybe even, maybe, maybe even more. Probably like two, two and a half years ago. Uh, but the island's more recent, and it's got some. it's got some cool stuff. It's got some farms. The main farm... The main sort of idea with the island was that uh, it had a lot of water around it, so I was going to make a really efficient mob farm, which I did, and I think it should still work. I don't think it used any mechanics that are now broken. So I'm excited to go see that. Which it's a it's a pretty cool build. Uh, definitely massive. I'm trying to remember. I think I just left it. It's it's made like in a uh, an extreme hills biome, and I think I just left it kind of it's as a giant structure. I don't think I ever did much with it. I was trying to hide it mostly in a mountain, but that didn't end up working because it was way too big. So, anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.